Hi, welcome to episode 94 of Credit 101. In this episode, we're going to talk about the impact of a foreclosure and also a short sale on your credit. Now, a lot of people think that, you know, when you get a foreclosure or short sale, it's just going to really tank your credit score. But people don't think about the most important thing. Before you even got that foreclosure or that short sale, possibly you had late payments. Late payments is the biggest thing that's going to hurt your credit score. So usually when you We'll get in the process of not paying your mortgage before the foreclosure process, you get those late payments. And all of those late payments every month is dropping your credit score. So if you already have a low credit score when you finally file for what may actually file the foreclosure, then your credit score is not going to tank as much as it would have tanked if you guys were to just do this like foreclosures came out of nowhere, you don't see any late payments, or you have like a 700 something credit score, you may see your credit score go down 120 all the way to 160 points, okay? But remember, a lot of times people have those late payments, so it don't go down as much because your credit score already got messed up based off of the late payments. So just understand that with a foreclosure, your credit score is going to go down, but remember, your credit score is probably already low anyway, just from having those late payments in your credit reports. Usually when you guys have like a foreclosure in your credit report, or maybe if you do a short sale, I tell people, start repairing. As soon as you start getting on late payments, and especially if you know you're not going to pay it, there's inaccuracies on your credit reports. Most likely look for the things that's wrong on there, the date open, look for the payment history, um, look for just anything that can be wrong the payment status if there's anything wrong with your credit reports i would complain and work to get that account removed right away especially if you know like okay i'm 30 days late now but i'm not going to pay this word it's just going to be a foreclosure if you honestly know this in your heart or with any of your accounts because i see people do this with credit cards too then i highly suggest that you all please 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 start trying to remove that account as soon as possible because you know it's going to be a charge off for your foreclosure for you in the end anyway so why not just start right away to remove it that way when you finally do a foreclosure or your short sale you know you probably got that account off your credit reports already so you don't get a hit to your credit score or your credit report so that's just my advice to you if you guys have any questions please let me know you can call me 833 rakita and visit my website rakita.com and schedule an appointment i'll be happy to go and go over any questions that you guys have about this subject but i'll see you guys in episode 95 Hi, welcome to episode 95 of Credit 101. In this episode, we're going to talk about bankruptcy. We're going to talk about the different fees that could be associated with it, the different types, and then based off of which bankruptcy you file, what results can you actually get? Now, I want to kind of just go over my experience because I think it's easier to go over it this way because I feel like it's going to be like some additional information that you guys can learn because I had to file for bankruptcy before. Um, I filed chapter 13 bankruptcies. There's two kinds. It's chapter 7, chapter 13. Chapter 7 is where they're going to get rid of everything on your credit. Chapter 13 is when you can actually file for bankruptcy, but they're going to give you some type of payment plan to pay it all back. To me, Chapter 7 is much cheaper um, in terms of your fees when paying it. Usually it's like a one-time payment thing. You pay that, that's it. Everything is going to, well, depending on your income, everything is going to be able to get just clear. You're going to get discharged. You don't have to pay, say, if you have like credit cards, you have a car, you have loans, the different things in your credit reports they're all going to be discharged through your bankruptcy so you don't have to pay it. Now, with Chapter 13, like I did, one thing that I did not like in terms of the payment, I found out that, so it's a certain amount that you have to pay in your bankruptcy. I think mine was like dollars a month or something I had to pay um, for my bankruptcy, but I have properties and things like that too that I did put in the, I had to put in the bankruptcy. Um, but when I did the bankruptcy i found out that my attorney charged me fifty two hundred dollars like i remember looking at like chapter seven bankruptcy people charge like five hundred dollars a thousand dollar max my attorney charged fifty two hundred dollars i paid money up front to him on top of that every time i was paying on my bankruptcy because i just did it temporarily um i didn't plan to go through but I mean, I said in play, I did not go through with my bankruptcy. So every month I was paying my bankruptcy, like the $600, that was all going towards my attorney. It did not go towards paying off any debts because it was $5,200 that was actually going to that attorney. So it can be much more expensive to do that. But if you guys have properties that you want to keep, um, maybe any type of assets you want to keep, if you make too much money, then you're probably going to be in the realm of chapter 13. But please look into these different fees because this can be something that could 
just be costly for you. And I don't want you guys to pay extra money if you don't have to pay it. And I apologize about um, my phone ringing. So that's just something that you guys can think about in terms of the fees. Again, chapter seven, everything just like wiped away. Chapter 13, you're paying it all back. Now with the chapter seven, you guys can buy a house in two years. Chapter 13, you can buy a house in one year. You just have to have ask for permission to see if you can actually um, buy a house. You can start building your credit with either one. To me, to start right away to build your credit with either one. And the results. Let's talk about the results. With Chapter 7, I see a lot of people just move on with their life. Again, everything is, you know, discharged. You can start off, start off brand new. You know, you move on with your life. But with Chapter 13, you're usually paying on that for three years or five years. So that's something that's going to be, like, dragged out. So keep that in mind. Um, yes, you could buy a house in a year, but it's still going to be dragged out. And remember, bankruptcies are supposed to stay on your credit reports for 10 years. And I say supposed to because you can definitely remove bankruptcy from your credit reports because I did that uh, with mine. I had to remove um, my bankruptcy um, because I didn't want it on there. And I technically... I, I was able to because there were errors listed with that bankruptcy. So see if you guys have errors on your bankruptcy, if you already filed or if you plan on filing, see if there's errors on there because that can be a reason to get the bankruptcy removed. And I had a client where, you know, I started working with them, a few clients, start working with them in a month, the bankruptcy come off, came off. But then I have other clients where it's like, dang, it took us a whole year, a year and a half to get it removed. And my thing is, would you rather go the year and a half, the year, or would you go to 10 years? You know, but a bankruptcy don't necessarily have to ruin your life. It can be like a great way for you just to start over if you want to start over. So think of it like that. But that's really the biggest thing is you got chapter seven, you got chapter 13. You can buy a house in two years for chapter seven, one year, chapter 13. Um, seven, everything is gone. Chapter 13, you're on the payment plan, okay? And chapter 13 costs way more than chapter seven. Um, so keep that in mind. If you all have any questions, definitely let me know. I'm very open in terms of what I had to do. Um, probably um, if you are where um, if you um, need help finding a bankruptcy attorney or have questions about it, um, I can definitely possibly guide you in the right direction. So give me a call, 833 Rakita. I'll be happy to answer your questions. I'll see you guys in episode 96. Hey, welcome to episode 96 of Credit 101. We're going to talk about bankruptcy and credit repair. So in the last episode, I kind of talked to you guys about how I filed for bankruptcy before I had to get it removed from my credit reports and how I have helped other people remove the bank, remove the bankruptcy from their credit reports. Now, bankruptcy can actually very much hurt your credit score, but it really depends, like when you actually get it added to your credit reports, it can very much hurt your credit score because you got to think about it. Some people just file randomly file bankruptcy. They may not have any late payments. They may have their credit score in the 700s. When your credit score is that high and that bankruptcy is added, your credit score is going to drop so much. It can drop 110 to 160 points. Um, it's it maybe even more too, depending on what your credit score is. If you already got, a, if you already got a very low credit score, like you already at the bottom, it's not going to drop as much. And that's really for those people that got late payments already. Every month you have a late payments, multiple accounts reporting late, and then you file bankruptcy. It's like no surprise that you did that and your credit score don't drop as much because you're already very low. Now, when it comes down to bankruptcy on your credit report, whether it's helping you or hurting you, bankruptcy is just an ultimate no-no. I just think about it as something that's like the ultimate, the worst thing to do is for some late payment. And late payments are very, very bad. Now you can actually remove that bankruptcy from your credit reports. Um, now the process of actually removing a bankruptcy from your credit reports is just finding out there's any errors on that bankruptcy. Okay. And then there's also third-party bureaus that's reporting the bankruptcy on your credit report like LexisNexis. I always tell people to remove the bankruptcy from LexisNexis. And then a lot of times you're going to see it's easier to get it removed from those three bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. And then also TransUnion have another thing. I, I'm hope I'm quoting it right. It's LCI or LGI, where that's where they actually get their bankruptcy data from. It's an internal company with them basically they own that company um and they're not necessarily getting information from lexus nexus anymore so that is something that you guys have to work to do is move that bankruptcy from lexus nexus hopefully you can remove it from that um, third party company with transunion that would be nice too and once you do that it should be easier to move it from your credit reports i'm seeing some people too in the first month we never tried to remove from third party bureaus and they got to remove from the credit report i 
have the letters out there that I have used and I have made available for you all. It's only $27 too. I suggested you guys check it out and try it, but don't just try those letters. Also implement the LexisNexis because it's very, very important. And if you guys have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you guys have. But I do suggest with bankruptcies, external credit reports for 10 years, I do suggest that you do something about it and you actually um, work to remove it. Because just imagine, I still will have years to go. Um, well, I'll still have like a few years while it will have to be on my credit report. So I always tell people, please, please, please work to remove that bankruptcy because if you remove the bankruptcy, your the doors are just going to open up for you because sometimes you may get denials just based off of having this bankruptcy on your credit report, and that's how it's going to hurt you. But it will help you once you get it removed. Okay, let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll see you guys in the next episode.